This is a case analysis of American Chemical Corporation's takeover of Universal and their divestment of their Collinsville plant to Dixon. My name is Richard Arias. The class has been 139. Dr. Shiroki is the professor at CSU Fresno. When it comes to ACC's historical performance, I chose Allied Chemical and Monsanto as a benchmark. The year is 1978. ACC has the highest sales of the three with $5.5 billion, highest net income of $350 million, a share price of $44, which has more than doubled from 1974, earnings per share of over $8, and a low beta of 1.2 for its 1974 to 1978 average. Operating profits for Collinsville rose all the way to almost $5 million in 1978 from less than a million in 1975. So this is a great performing company. When it comes to the competitive environment for ACC and its Collinsville plant, there were three top competitors that had over 50% of the capacity in America and over 59% in the southeastern United States. Also Union Chemical and Louisiana were building plants in the southeastern United States to take advantage of the growing profits. Sales were up 95% from 1970 to 79 for sodium chlorate. Capacity for sodium chlorate was only up at 70% so there was a growing demand between 8 and 10 percent per year. With high prices and profits, companies were jockeying to get in on the good times, performing acquisitions and divestments. When it comes to Collinsville's beta, which is a measure of risk, the unlevered beta for Collinsville, which removes debt, was calculated by unlevering the beta of two similar peer companies and averaging those two unlevered betas to arrive at an unlevered beta of 0.73 for Collinsville. The leverage beta adds back the target debt to equity ratio to the beta calculation. For Collinsville it was 54 percent leading to a 1.13 leverage beta. This lets us see the effects of the $12 million of debt financing from the acquisition. Cost of equity and weighted average cost of capital. Using CAPM, a risk free rate of 5%, a risk premium of 7.5%, which are both long term historical figures from Professor DeModeran's website, beta of 1.13, cost of equity of 13.5%, was calculated with a cost of debt of 11.25 percent which was given. With 100 percent debt financing, 0 percent equity financing, a cost of debt of 11 and a quarter, the cost of equity at 13 and a half percent was irrelevant with 100 percent debt financing. Using a tax rate of 40 percent, a whack of 6.8 percent was calculated. When looking at incremental cash flows and net present value using the liquidation method, a net present value of $2.4 million was arrived at. At the end of five years, all assets are sold at book value. Looking further at cash flows and net present value, using the end of useful life method depreciating the plant for its full 10 years, an MPV of $5.7 million was calculated. Using the same method, the end of, life, end of useful life method, but this time with a laminate coating installed, which would reduce costs, an MPV of $6.3 million was arrived at, making this the most attractive option. An NPV range between $2 and $12 million was arrived at. Given the high NPV, this acquisition is attractive. Once again, with the most attractive 
option being the, the, the laminate technology option. Strategic issues, there, there weren't many. Strategically, uh, being in the southeastern United States was a good thing for Dixon. They were already there. This is where their market was, and they were going to expand their products and their presence in that area. By offering complementary business products, such as sodium chlorate, which is what the Collinsville plant produces, they had the similar customers as the Collinsville plant. So acquiring that plant would let them sell the sodium chlorate to those customers that already did business with that plant. Uh, the downside issues, over capacity, there were new competitors coming in trying to chime in on the, the high profits and there were also rising power costs to deal with. But the synergies from the acquisition and the write-off of the Collinsville plant outweighed the downside issues, making them a non-issue. My recommendations for the management of Dixon would be to move forward with the acquisition go after the high MPV laminate coating option, take advantage of the growing profits in the years to come, and take advantage of the decent rate offered of 11.25%, which is not much higher than the the T-bills and T-bonds, and take advantage of the sinking fund, which lowers the risk of borrowing the $12 million in debt capital. So in conclusion, it can be asked if the acquisition was made by Dixon of the Collinsville plant, could they pay all their financial obligations? The financial obligation from the debt capital amounted to an $800,000 a year principal reduction payment and a $1.7 million a year interest payment on the $12 million totaling $2.5 million a year. In 1979, Dixon had profits after taxes of $4 million. Collinsville had profits after tax of two million. This is six million dollars in profits before the acquisition with growing profits in the years to come. Given this, their debts can be paid. Thank you for listening.